um, that are working right now are these two boxes. These speakers. Stop playing. <laughs> it was, it was He's going to break it. Oh, it we haven't well, so I mean, it's broken. Chris broke it. <laughs> we are recording and we are live. Can uh, Colm or Michael or Tom, can someone give us a thumbs up that you can hear us? All right. Nope. Yes. Okay, Tom. They gave us a thumbs up. Three for three. Good. Okay. We'll call the meeting to order. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Doctor. Uh, thank you all for being here. Happy New Year, one and all. Off we go. This is the easiest meeting of the year. <laughs> it's uphill or downhill, depending on your perspective from here. Um, okay, so um, let's see. Do you want to do the roll? Sure. So so we've got, so we've got Maria Weingarten. Here. Bob Hamill. Here. Victor Alvarez. Here. Todd Lavieri. Here. Anna Carlson is here. Chris Labrie. Here. Dave Yao. Here. We have Michael Chen. Yeah. Tom Schulte. Yep. And Colin Dobbin. Here. Okay, so you are good. We are good with a full set. Um, we do have two alternates that are in process. You good? Um, and they'll be going to the select. Men's, uh, office tomorrow, the meeting tomorrow, and then uh, town council from there, and they should join us in February. Very good. Okay, uh, one minor change to the agenda, uh, as opposed to a temporary secretary, we did have a volunteer um, that uh, has raised his hand and, and has um, offered to be our secretary. Uh, very grateful for that, um, Chris Labrie. So we will have to have a um, uh, nominees and, and a vote and can I get a motion for a nominee for the Office of Secretary for the Board of Finance? Maria. Motion for Chris Labrie. Any other nominations from the floor? Mm -hmm. Seeing none. All those in favor of Chris Labrie is the new secretary. Second. We need a second. I'll second. Actually, don't. But... Yep. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Don't. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Chris Petrie down. He can't vote against himself. I don't know. Why are you going to say it? It was unanimous. It was unanimous. All that very well. Thank you, Chris. Congratulations. Um, and uh, I appreciate the help and support. Uh, obviously, with the recordings, it makes it a lot easier. Obviously, Tucker as well. So, um, um, and as I said, uh, Chris is a very vocal, very constructive um, member, contributing member of this board. And I did ask to make sure that he doesn't get too distracted with the minutes and then lose our the great value that you add every week or every month. So um, anyway, let's so we'll, we'll make sure we can help out as best we can for that. Okay, uh, with that, we'll have a motion to approve the minutes from the December 12th meeting. So moved. Victor, second. 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 Bob, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None? Okay. Uh, I'll turn it over to the first second, please. Okay. So <clears throat> I think the things that will be most interesting to you is uh, we were supposed to start the Board of Selectmen budget review today, but with the uh, town offices being closed and the schools being closed, we are having our first meeting on the budget tomorrow. So um, we're hoping that we can get start started really early at 8 a.m. and get through everything we needed to get to. Um, so let's pray for no delayed starts tomorrow. Um, what, what are you seeing? What are you hearing tomorrow? What What are you going through tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow is Department of um, we're doing Recreational Department, Department of Public Works, and then the General Government. So um, excellent, great. That's what we'll be doing tomorrow. Um, and then, just so everyone knows, we had a um, there was a petition circulated to call for a public hearing um, on the moratorium application or affordable housing moratorium application. So we will be hosting a public hearing on Wednesday, January 24th at 7 p.m. right here. It's open to the public. I just want people to know that the public hearing is only to discuss the moratorium application. We will not be discussing any of the existing affordable housing projects that are currently under litigation. So um, I don't want the, the um, you know, the public to be frustrated if they come and they wanna have 
questions answered about those applications because we have pending litigation on all three of those properties. We cannot discuss them. So um, who's running the meeting? Uh, the meeting will be run by myself, Sarah Carey. So it's it's in advance of the planning and zoning and meeting. And so Sarah Carey, and then we will have um, Ira and uh, Nick Bamonte here to help. I think, or maybe it's just, yeah, both Ira and Nick will be here, right, Tucker, I think. Um, and so they will be also assisting with that public hearing. Okay. So you can kick off that meeting with that comment. That, yes, I'll be yeah, doing the same thing yeah, yeah, there, yeah. but I just, in case anybody gotcha. was only planning to come, I'd like yeah. them to know that sure. we won't be discussing that. So if they hear this and they don't. Um, also, uh, tomorrow we will be, uh, the Board of Selectmen will be voting to seat uh, three the members of the Affordable Housing Committee. That once, if it's approved tomorrow, it'll move on to the Town Council for approval. And then we will have your Board of Finance alternates on the agenda tomorrow, as well as uh, Conservation Commission and uh, one of the audit committee members to be seated. So it'll be a, a very full day tomorrow. That's, that's it. That's it. Um, reminder, um, committees. So Tucker, once we get our full slate of members, so what we should have is uh, prior to our February, first February meeting, have that uh, all the committees go out, members, and then open spaces, open slots, whatever. So what I can do is send you the current configuration yep. taking out Amy and um, Judy. Judy. And then you all can look at it. And if you, I guess, if yep. you want to continue perfect. to serve. Just continue to serve, or there's some gaps now that those two have left. So perfect. Okay, that would be great. And we'll get that all uh, ironed out. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, Nancy. Okay, well, thank you. Please join us, yeah, on the Canaan Museum and Historical Society. I'm really hoping this works. <laughs> Give me one second here. Uh, Coleman, Michael, can you hear Nancy? Yep. Yeah, we can hear. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you for sending the deck out in advance. We're having it ready. I think I had an old one. There was a December one. This yeah. Is, this is the January board. Yeah, okay. Mm. Like yeah, thanks. Okay, there we go. You got it. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you all for having me here. I'm Nancy Beery. I'm the executive director of the McKinnon Museum and Historical Society. And I just um, want to give you a little bit of an update. We've been very, very busy at the Museum and Historical Society, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about what's um, going on. Obviously, this is the famous Virginia Taylor uh, picture of our ice cream social. So um, to, just to give you a little bit of background, the New Canaan Museum is the oldest historical society in Fairfield County. It was founded in 1889. Um, it then lived at the library for a long time. Uh, one of the library donors had funded a room and the, and the historical society met there until the Hanford Solomon House, which is 33 Owen Oak Ridge, came up for sale and the board voted to move there. Um, quite in my view, quite stupidly, they gave up the parking lot. They exchanged the parking lot, which was part of the Hanford Silliman House uh, that had been the original farm. They gave it to St. Michael's in exchange for the original town hall, which is now um, our, our main building, the 1825 town hall. So we don't own the parking, St. Michael's owns that. And we got the, um, it's a beautiful town hall building. It's now part of our museums. Um, the studio of John Rogers, which was located on St. Mark's property, was moved in 1966. And for those of you that don't know, that was the very first national landmark building designated in New Canaan. The second one was in the 90s, and that was the Glass House. Um, the one-room schoolhouse from the Rock School was moved from its original location at, on Laurel Road to the property. That was the very first district school in New Canaan. Um, and it's now, it's sort of the highlight of our school tours. The children really love being in there. And then in 2000, the friend of the Gores Pavilion restored the Gores Pavilion in Irwin Park, which of course the town owns and we operate as a museum. Uh, this is our fiscal year 24 operating budget. As you can see, membership and major gifts are the bulk of our, um, of our revenue. We get money from some programs and special events. 
We get grants. I will tell you during COVID was a wonderful time to be a museum because Connecticut really stepped up and provided all kinds of funding. Uh, we got the payroll protection plan. We had all kinds of monies. Uh, those sources now, they, they petered and now they're gone, um, which is why the number now is so low. The, uh, obviously the town of New Canaan supports us and we're very grateful for that. That was a change three years ago. And um, then we have some miscellaneous other things that we oftentimes can't, can't predict. A, a bequest, for example, is the kind of thing that falls into that other category. Our spending is, is our salaries, um, fundraising and marketing. The maintenance is quite a large chunk. Uh, we have numerous historic house museums, as the name suggests, they're all very old. They need constant restoration and, and work done on them. Um, and then utilities and programs. I will say one thing that the, the salaries look disproportionate. It's in part because there's a small staff that does everything. We do our own programming, we do our own development, we do our own fundraising. Um, I don't do my own maintenance, but we shovel our own walk. So we do um, pretty much whatever we can as a, as a group of, of three with then some included in here are independent contractors. They run the website, our bookkeeper, outside auditor, that kind of thing. Uh, these are just a few things that we've spent money on that are really for the benefit of the town as well. We've, we've contributed to the Gores Pavilion. We put about a half a million dollars into restoring the Hanford Silliman House and the town hall. Um, all the buildings got painted. There was a lot of woodwork and rock that had to be taken care of. And then we put in the Walworth Terrace. And ironically, we put this in just around the time that COVID hit. And so it was very, very popular in town. A lot of events having nothing to do with the historical society took place there. And this is what we have. We have an enormous collection of um, objects and documents and artifacts from New Canaan's history. We have, um, if, if you've seen either the recent wedding dress exhibit or the evening gown exhibit, that's just a very small sample of our 6,000 piece clothing and textile collection. We have all kinds of um, land and property records most of the realtors come and look up properties before they list something at the Historical Society. We have increasingly more and more information about rural cemeteries, in part thanks to the Eagle Scouts and some of the groups that have volunteered to map those and identify people. We have an enormous photograph collection. Um, Sid Greenberg, who you may know, he, a lot of his photographs were in early advertisers. And then we have art. We have lots of art. Um, we are in the process of building, which I'll get to later, a, a, silver, a permanent exhibit space for the Silver Mine Art Colony, and that will be where we can show some of this art. Um, we are planning in a couple of weeks to open a, an exhibit on portraits of New Canaan, which is only, we're only doing it because we have these massive, beautiful oil paintings of New Canaanites that there's almost no occasion to show. They're just sitting in the vault. So we thought what better way to tell the story of the people that live there than to pull out these paintings. So that will be, that will be an interesting exhibit for us. Uh, we have been very, very busy. We're about 30 lectures and presentations a year. We do three to four major exhibits. Um, we do all kinds of tours and school tours. October for Design was an initiative we started after four years ago, maybe I think four years ago and it's to celebrate art and architecture in New Canaan. It, it grew out of work that, that TDAC was doing around New Canaan's identity as a home for mid-century modern architecture and drawing visitors just for that. And since we did the biennial house tour anyway, we sort of expanded it and got all of our cultural partners involved. So it's become, you know, it's a thing that the Carriage Barn will do something and Glass House will do something all related programming in this short window of time. Um, our most recent kind of big initiative was the Odecast walking tour at Lakeview Cemetery. What, if you don't know Odecast, it's an app and you can upload video and audio and images and whatever you want. And we were looking at the 10,000 plus people buried in Lakeview and realized that it's a who's who of New Canaan and people that not only shaped the town, but shaped a much larger world than New Canaan. And so we identified 20 as our launch group and we did research on them and found pictures on them and recorded, um, we wrote scripts and Dee Bartlett, who is a big supporter of the museum, 
did the audio reading the scripts. And so you can go to you can go to Odacast and get a QR code and do a walking tour and learn about the people in the cemetery. And obviously, it's a program we would love to see grow. It would be great if we could cover you know everybody in there. That will that's a long way off for us, but it was it was an exciting thing to do, and I think all of us learned a lot. We didn't know we had no idea the people that were in there. Um, our users we have lots of school children. Sadly, we have school children not from New Canaan. We are still trying to lure the New Canaan students. Um, I think the school did has started a colonial day, and that took the place of coming to the property for tours. They bring in reenactors. It's you know it's much more elaborate than what we would get with us. But I still strongly believe that that standing in a building and looking at what was original to the time period is a different experience than having somebody in costume kind of going through it. Uh, I will say that my very first month of work, a man came and asked if I would open the Hanford Silliman house for him. And I did, and he burst into tears and he said, I came here as a child and it has shaped my life. And I'm now a professional reenactor and I talk about colonial Connecticut going around the world. So I do think that it, it is an experience that is unique to being in that space. Um, obviously our property is used by a lot of organizations. Our ice cream social for the last couple of years has been free to everybody, members, non-members, anybody. And the crowds have grown to about five or 600 people. Um, we've got a lot of volunteers. And then October for Design is really the place that we get people from outside New Canaan. Our house <laughs> tour, we had people from four different countries and many, many states in the United States. And because they know about it, they plan, you know, I'll get a call a year in advance and say, I'm gonna come with my wife, where should I stay? You know, what else could we do kind of thing? So those are our visitors. Um, and then, then in June of 2023, we launched our Campus Reimagined campaign. It's a $2 million campaign. We're doing four main things on the property. The first is um, a permanent exhibition on the history of New Canaan, which is, we've been working on for about four years. We're working with a design company in Philadelphia. And we're, if you know our property, if you walk in the main library, the library and offices will be gone. And it's about a thousand square feet that will be dedicated to the history of New Canaan. And there's going to be some, um, they call them media consoles, but they're basically interactive. And I was up in, in Massachusetts testing the prototypes. And you can, for example, the one that has 50 New Canaan people, you can search by whether they were a leader or they were most notorious by categories. And then these people come up and there's a biography of them and some pictures. So it's a way to pack more content into a pretty small space but we will have items on display, we'll have mannequins, we'll have storyboards around the space. Uh, the Special Collections Museum, which is pictured here, is replacing our existing tool museum. Um, it came about because we were, I still can't figure out if we were gifted it or it had been abandoned, but there was this beautiful 1860 carriage that was owned by Stephen Hoyt that was at the Stanford dump and we got it out and we restored it. It took 18 months to restore, and it was very expensive to restore, but it's an exquisite 1860 carriage that was given to Stephen Hoyt when he retired as president of the New, Can uh, the New Haven Railroad Line. And so we were thinking about, okay, where are we gonna put this? And we realized that what we wanted to do, the Tool Museum is not really a museum because it's not weather tight. There's animals in and out. I mean, it, you can't really display anything but tools there. So um, Mark Markiewicz, who's on our board, did the architectural drawings for this. And we're putting in, it's 1,100 square feet, basically where the tool museum is. And it will house um, the carriage in the glass front window. The middle part will be an operational printing press. We have the Ho Acorn Press that the advertiser gave to the Historical Society many, many years ago. It's still operational. It's beautiful. The, um, the man who's in charge of Connecticut Humanities came down for a tour of our campus and he said to me, do you realize this is the only one in Connecticut? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. It looks like an acorn. Um, so we will have a, a, the center of this building will be a place that adults and children can come for workshops and, and do printing. We've made some bookmarks. We've made some note cards. They can experiment with things like that. And then the last section is 
a place to exhibit silver mine artists. So we have enough art for probably the next four or five years. We can also borrow art. We can, we can rotate the artists. And then if you can see on this picture, there's sort of a little shed off the back. And that was Addison Millar, who was one of the founding members of Silvermine. That was his studio. It's still on his property on Mill Road. And the family, it's a sort of a real tragedy. Addison Millar died when his car stalled on the train tracks and was hit by oh, the train. Geez. His daughter was raised by the Borglum family. Solon mm -hmm. Borglum is a Silvermine sculptor. And the, so the Borglum family took over the Millar property and the Borglum descendants had given us this studio. So that will be moved to the back of this building, uh, which was sort of how it was originally. Originally, it was, a, it was an adjunct to the Millar household. Right now, it became a freestanding building, but we're going to put it back to kind of suggest the way it was. It's made out of the first cut of bark from the mills. So it's got this sort of very thin veneer bark. We're gonna disassemble it and rewrap a new shell with the bark. Uh, the, the inside of the building is not salvageable. So we're really salvaging the exterior. And um, in that will be a media console that will have all 28 of the founding members of Silvermine that you can search and learn about and see samples of their art. Um, the third project is actually almost done because it had to be done right away. The Rogers studio needed, was in terrible disrepair. The skylight, beautiful skylight. If you ever cut through our parking lot, look up to your left. There's this beautiful skylight was leaking. So we're already well underway. Um, the board is using the museum's own funds, you know, out of the investment account to pay for that, um, with the hope that we can repay ourselves because, we didn't really want to spend that much money on it. We're getting some funding from the state because it is a landmark building and the interior has been all redesigned. So if you, if you know John Rogers' work at all, his, he did these kind of clay putty people um, and they're called Rogers groups. His most famous was the Council of War, which was Lincoln and Stanton and Grant together. He did, he was a fierce abolitionist and so did a whole series around abolition. Mm -hmm. And we're just redesigning the inside so that you can come in and learn about his life and work without a dose. I mean, it'll have just signs and labels and you can, visitors can navigate themselves. And then the, um, the fourth thing is if you've ever been to our archival storage, it's jam packed. And so we figured out that we have an attic that can be transformed and we would, we would move the men's, the military and the children's up there and it would give us more space in our existing space for um, dresses. But it's it's hard to make archival storage because the climate's really important and the humidity is really important. So what seems like should be not a big project is about a $90,000 project. So that's our initiative. We've, we've started um, camp, we've started fundraising for that. People have been extraordinarily generous and supportive of both the vision and, you know, the, the idea that we're gonna do all, all four at once. And we hope to have everything done by December of 2024. Uh, I was just talking today, and I think we will break ground on the Tool Museum in February. So that's, I'm very, uh, I would welcome any questions. I really am very grateful for all the town does to support us and appreciate your time. Well, great update. Thank you for that. That was, uh... I think more than we all bargained for. That was terrific. I didn't have yeah. the latest on that for sure. When you say Borglum, you mean Borglum as in Mount Rushmore? Yeah, that's good. Same thing? So it's it's a relative, but not the, okay. the one in Sil Silvermine was Solon. Okay. But yes, they were all sculptors just on different scales. <laughs> okay. Questions? Yeah. You know, a couple of questions. Mr. Secretary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Uh, so this is kind of a nitpicky one, but your, your the revenues were short of your expenses, so how did you bridge the gap? We have investment um, money. Um, for the Going back a little bit, for those of you that may not know, we had owned a pro another property. It wasn't adjacent, but it's close to the museum. I guess there was plans years and years ago to turn it into another preschool. That got abandoned and that property was sold, so we have had some money that, that helps us bridge the gap. It's invested by Newberger Berman. Okay, so you 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 have you have an investment account. 
<clears throat> that kind of back you up. Mm -hmm. Have has the library ever talked to you about using the legacy building in any way? We we talked about it um, years and years ago when the when I first started, I discussed it with Ellen Cravato about you know could it be a clothing and textile storage area? I think the idea we can't really have our operations be multi-sided. You know, it's 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 very difficult for us, even with the Gores Pavilion and the Little Red Schoolhouse that we operate on Carter Street. We just don't have the staff to have us all spread out. So it would have had to be moved to the Historical Society. I don't know. I mean, we went to P&Z and there was a lot of issues around our coverage as it was. So I don't even know that that was possible. And we certainly didn't have the money to do it. Right. And I mean, they never I, talked to you in any way of using their property, using that building in no. some way connected to your operation. No. Right now we do, we're storing the murals from that building for them. All right. Who who owns those murals? I'm assuming the library owns those murals. They say you do. Who owns what? The murals? The murals that were in the slant room. I don't know. But I mean, you have them. We have them. Yeah. They've been they were taken off by a professional and and um they something was done to secure them. So when they when when and if they get un, unfolded, they will be they won't have shrunk or or you know been mm, that's good. Yeah. yeah, and they're in our vault. Good. Thank you. So you keep track of people who visit your campus. I saw that 5,000 people visited. I assume that was for calendar year 2023? Yeah, we do. We keep, well, we have a bunch of ways to calculate it. I mean, school children, we have all those numbers. Um, people that, that come to events and programs, we have those numbers. We ask people to sign in. We probably miss people on sign in because I know that there's times that people just, like realtors especially, they'll come in, they just want to look at a file, they may forget to sign in. So, but yeah, we do. And also that. like, I know I attended uh, Juneteenth two years ago and there's a yeah. big crowd there. Are you counting all those people? No, that show? no, because that when, when people use our space, um, <laughs> we don't count them as our visitors. I mean, then our numbers would be way higher because yeah. people people rent the space or use the space. In the case of Juneteenth, we were a supporter of their program, so they didn't rent the space, but all of those people that came. And last year, there was three times more people. Like now, now, they're, now Juneteenth is too big to fit. Yeah. So do you have you kept track of that information historically as well? No. Mm -mm. We started a few years ago um, as I was trying to get some state grants. They were requiring everything from zip code data to demographic data. Um, and so we really realized we needed to start to track who's coming. And with this $2 million campaign, do you have a forecast for what you what the um, improvements will do to your visitor count? We haven't forecasted that way, no. Um, I think our sense was there's no place in New Canaan that you can come to hear about the, or learn about the history of New Canaan. And so I have to think that once we have it built and we can let the schools know and let you know every all of our cultural partners know that that's going to drive traffic. Um, one of the things that we did as part of TDAC was the culture guide. And so actually there is a book now in town that has all of the cultural organizations and that gets handed out all over the place. So I did- heard copy that I could share. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's pretty mangled. So I'm expecting that. The, the Special Collections Museum, we've had a lot of inquiries about having special events in the Special Collections Museum. And <clears throat> ideally I would love that. We have um, the Nisley Pollinator Garden is installed right there and there's gonna be more pollinator gardens built around the Special Collections Museum. So we're gonna have this outdoor pathway space with pollinator gardens and the Special Collections Museum. And I think that it would be really an ideal place for special events. I just, I'm, um, this is a fault of mine. I, until the stuff is in there, I need to understand how much space around it. You know, obviously I don't want anything to be damaged. And, and even though Mark has built this beautiful model that has all kinds of little things in it, I still can't visualize exactly the crowd capacity. But our hope is that um, we will be able to offer it for, for groups and for special events and for every, you know, people that want to come and enjoy the campus. Campus usage is also way up, which we don't track. But anecdotally, you know, more people are coming 
to use the lawn, to use the picnic tables, to sit on the on the grounds. Um, even just toddler time next door, they came and they were, what were they doing? Launching apples. I think they were launching apples. So, you know, there, there it is, it is more, it's not like the library's green, it's not as centrally located, but it is a green that is getting dog walkers and people and you know activity. Um, two questions for you. Donations, donations can be made online to the campaign. We have a website, nchistory.org, and you can donate that way. There's there's both membership and donations, and people always say, what's the difference? And donation is, I guess, people that don't want to receive the newsletter, but <laughs> people that, um, and and membership is obviously the members are our supporters. We, we are anticipating that we will do some changes around things like member pricing once, once all of this campus is done. So the campaign, I'm talking about the campaign specifically, you can go to that to nchistory.org. Yes, yes, yeah. And then are you, you asked, would you had $30,000 last year from the town? 25. 25,000, 25, yeah. is, is, is that the same request this year, more or less? Well, we we met with this selectman and we uh, we obviously asked for more. Okay. Um, we, we feel like we are growing fast enough that we really could use more primarily because we want to be open more. Um, as it is now, there's there's three of us. So uh, you know, every evening program, every weekend program is is basically me. And you know, we just it would be great to be able to have the campus open and to have people that are waiting for people to come and invite them in and show them around. So it's it's mostly for that. It's mostly to have this conversion be from an historical society that had very limited hours and you could come and do your research to being a museum where you can come on a Saturday or a Sunday and come in off the street and learn something. Oh, okay, so we'll see that in a couple of weeks, yeah. Um, I read this presentation maybe three days ago and there were there was another slide that's not here and it showed the other towns supports for that. That was the other version. Yeah. So there was a December so, version, so this so is the January. We, yeah, I don't, why did we purge that? Because I thought that was an interesting Reference point we, as, to, we were as trying to what a fair funding level would be. So I thought that was going to be yeah. the whole point of the. Yeah. Uh, I've been talking to Alyssa Tucker and, and she can distribute it to you. Yes. I thought in that first, was a in, compelling case to, you know, up the up the ante. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was. We had done some research into what other towns did to support their historical societies or their yeah, no, almost nothing is called a historical society anymore. It's a history center or it's a history museum or whatever. But um. Proportionately, I mean, Norwalk gives its museum and historical society several hundred thousand dollars. You know, the only one that is less than New Canaan is Darianne, but their historical society is only open 15 hours a week and offers almost no programming or, you know, it's, it's a lovely building and stuff, but it's just not doing what we're doing for the campus and yeah. everything. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Just send me the slide and I'll get it back to you. Okay. We were just trying to keep it within the time frame that. Yeah, I'm sorry. And and is that kind of the I thought I saw 20% of operating expenses if I roughly is is that was that the ask? That was my to ask okay. for the, to the three select one that they consider that, which would which would put it about eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay. Other questions? I'll just make Tom or um Colm, just let me get the online team here. Michael? <laughs> yep, no questions. Very good report. Thank you. I'll, I'll just add as a realtor, I have been in to, to do some research on, on modern. So it was it was great to be able to go there and, and be able to look through the documents and try to gain some more information. So it was very helpful. Yeah, our house files are some of our better organized stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. OK, well, if there's nothing else, Nancy, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see the budget request in a couple of weeks. Okay, great. Thank you. thank you. This was terrific. All right. <laughs> what happened? No, just we have to unplug our power. You have to you have to climb under and get out. Oh. User friendly. Very. Okay, we've got are Josh and Ann up. Yep. I think you have the latest financials on your. Hello, everyone. Hopefully, you can hear me. Hello. Hey, hey. Um, sorry. Hello. Or, yeah, yeah, we can hear you, Josh. Hang okay. on one second. We had the schedule of the meetings. The budget meeting. Yeah. Yep. That's also, I mean, we don't have to discuss Nothing that. Everybody's got that. That's because okay. that's all you approved already. Yeah, I just want to make sure everyone saw that. I don't know if there were any, any reasons to have it. There's no questions or concerns. Okay, perfect. Sure. All right, good. Over to you, Josh. How are we doing? All right. Uh, we are doing pretty good. So I am just going to share my screen real quick. Hopefully, you can see that. 
Uh, let's try to make it as big as possible. All right. So uh, these are the year-to-date financials as of December 31st, uh, marching, uh, marking the halfway point through the year. Uh, starting with the revenue side, the overall revenue is at 61% of the $160 million budgeted for the year. Uh, tax revenue is at 62% uh, going into the January collection period. Um, on to conveyance fees, they're sitting at 56% of the, uh, which is, uh, let's see, conveyance fees is uh, 846,000 of the 1.5 million that was budgeted. Obviously, I thought that was an encouraging number. Yeah, I was, yeah. You're a little worried about that number, but that's not bad for December, yeah. right? You have all of the spring coming. Yeah. It's not bad on a percentage basis against last year. It's actually outpacing. It was around 50 ish percent last year of what we had budgeted. So we're a little ahead of the pace, <laughs> even though the budgeted number is lower, of course, as it was last year. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> That's encouraging. So parking is at 57 uh, percent of the 930,000 that was budgeted, uh, com which is pretty comparable to last year. Um, we're waiting on the final uh, permit numbers to come in as we're working down the wait list to kind of get that settled. Um, on to interest, that's at 740000 of the 900000 budgeted, around 82%, uh, right now beating last year by about 300000 And yes. obviously that's you know moving the needle up. Yeah. Um, let's see, last year at this time, uh, the overall revenue was also about 60%. So it seems like we're similarly on track. Uh, any questions on the revenue side of things? Well, just building, I mean, you skip building permits. Is it, That seems off. So it's the, the, the building permits that are in there, there's a slight gap between what's in open gov that needs to be finalized in our system. And there are some adjustments to be made. Uh, the true number is probably closer to uh, fifty five percent of what oh. was budgeted. Um, okay, it's it's just a you know what timing. happens when yeah exactly timing. It's timing okay well that's good that's right on the money then mm -hmm. yeah are there, um, are any, there any other questions, questions on revenues uh, Bob or anybody Tom Michael yeah I would think interest would be about two x because even if rates start to come down they're not going to come down as fast as they. Two, two x the seven forty, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 that makes sense. Well, we're going to get a you know we're going to get a quite a bit of money now in January and February right. again. So right, but that, yes. but that would you had that option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Although some people pay, I guess they do. All. They do. Yeah, we yeah. we pulled the extra twenty million that we had invested because we needed it to cover uh, the end of November and December until tax comes tax money comes in. So mm -hmm. we're probably. Right now, before anything else, we probably have about a ten million left right now until tax. You know, in the next two weeks, tax are going to come out, and at that point, Andrew will have funds to go out and invest right. again. Good. Okay. So down to the expense side of things, that's sitting at forty-five percent. So there's nothing really extraordinary that's that's sticking out right now on the expenditure side. Last year, we were at forty-four percent, so it's you know within a margin of error of what's booked at any given moment um any questions on expenditures it's, and no it's... special requests looking at you no one's come and asked for we haven't had any requests for anything no snow that helps <laughs> tiger has a budget well, uh, you better just knock wood right now because yeah. we're talking about the end of the week and yeah. there's already yeah. delay go tomorrow. easy we're, the we're already ahead of the game is tiger on we're already ahead of the yeah, game yeah go easy <laughs> hey, here we go. You have a lot of salt, though. A lot of salt. <laughs> yeah, you need that, right? Today, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Great job, by the way. Again, Tiger. Thank you. Those are a piece of cake tonight. Um, any questions? Feels like we're right on the track. Yeah, just one. The border beds at forty-two percent. Is that a timing issue? Uh, that likely is a timing issue, yes. It's probably one of their payrolls that needs to be 
be booked at that time. Okay. Yeah, it was a timing issue with last year. Their payrolls are all in, like Josh said, their payrolls are all in for December. So it was probably a timing difference for last year. Maybe a payroll did not get in by the time we had to get the financials out, um, booked on our side. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We've got a couple of approvals. Um, so there are a couple to review and then one to approve. Um, to review, there are four transfers, which total uh, 69.50. Um, just administrative transfers, nothing really out of the ordinary. And then lastly, there is one to approve. Uh, it's a $12,462 mm -hmm. transfer from contingency to the highway department's uh, supply auto truck line. Uh, this is uh, to pay for a street sweeper. Uh, the budgeted amount was uh, $200,000. The, uh, they went out to bid and came back with a price of around uh, $262,000. And they were able to uh, broker a trade in for fifty thousand, and to make up the difference, there's the twelve thousand that that needs to kind of get brought into an account they can spend it out of. Any questions? No. Motion to approve. Chris, second. Second. Bob Hamill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. None. Okay. So moved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. And anything else on your on your end? Um, no, no, we're in good shape. We're in definitely in good shape. Okay. So uh, the only other thing is um on the thirteenth, February thirteenth, your meeting on February thirteenth, we're gonna have a WPCA meeting at six o'clock. So your regular meeting starting at seven. So I ask that you come at six. Tiger wants to update. Yeah. Study. Okay, so that'll be ready, Tiger. Yes, that'll, that'll be ready. Yep. Oh, nice. So just to just reckon, you know, a couple of reminders. So Board of Ed is the uh, sixth mm -hmm. Tuesday. Yep. That's pretty much the night. Yes. It's okay. By the way, I did ask for their presentation with photographs. <laughs> I told them we like. Town yes. Council has said no photographs. We like the recognition. <laughs> <laughs> of the investment of the Pictures acknowledgements of the unbelievable hundred million dollar investment we have. I'm struggling. The board can tell me I'm crazy, but don't you want to see a couple photographs? I didn't realize that we were told about it. <laughs> we'll have photographs. So anyway, I talked to Brian. He got back to me as fast as he's gotten back to me in seven years. Yes, we'll have. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The photos are in, quote unquote. Um. <clears throat> Okay, then health on the eighth, thirteenth. We start at six. Tiger, how long do you think you'll need? Do you want? Do you need the hour? Uh, I yeah, I don't. I don't want to do it a disservice. Yeah, that's fine. I just just I don't know if there's anything else on the agenda. Okay, good. All right. And then the fifteenth, final review. We vote on the seventh of March. Okay. All right. Um. Any other items? I did want to cover that to make sure we are all aware. And if there's an issue with not being able to attend one of the meetings, just let us know. We want to make sure we've got a, we're not voting in any of those meetings. Um, Tiger, are we voting on anything on the O and I? This is just a, re a review of the, of the, of the, of the report, right? The update. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're on mute. You're yeah, that's a... You would think three years, right? The, um, yeah, it's just an update of the report. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. It's also really helpful if you could tell me if you're coming in person or remote. If I don't hear from you, I assume you're in person, but if yeah. you're ever going to be remote, it's helpful because with the seating. Okay. okay. Any other housekeeping items? You will be getting your budget books, obviously. Yeah. We'll, um, Pam will also send out an email asking you if you want them in hard copy or hard copy. Uh, electronically. I know most people are going to want it. Hard copy. Um, I can't do all the calculations and write in the notes and the margins without right. the hard copy, right? Yeah. Most school, it is what it is. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, housekeeping and else? Yes, sir. When do you want us to begin the uh, subcommittee oh. meetings with the departments? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so yeah, the after the Board of Selectmen. So once the Board of Selectmen approves, then the town council, they've already, they've been eager, they've been scheduling. We have to tell them they needed to wait until A, your subcommittees were established and then B, let the Board of Selectmen finish their work. So that'll be this week. Actually, it has to be next week. Well, no, the Board of Selectmen goes yeah. through. They don't vote until the third Next week, so it's the last week. Well, we go right into the meetings, but that's okay. I mean, other than the Board of Ed, we almost have three weeks for all the other departments. The Board of Ed will be the one we don't. It'll be a little tight. Um, You've always met with them. Yeah, no, we have to. We'll have to be the last week of January. Yeah. 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 When do you meet with them? The Board of Ed? When Board of Ed is, uh, oh, no, it's on the 25th. 25th, yeah. yeah. Well, we see them on the seventh, so it's not a lot of time. We do need to. We'll schedule. I'll. I'll. Okay. So Tucker, will you help me schedule that with them? Okay. Yeah, that's a little tight. It's a little tight. Um, <clears throat> DPW is always takes the time. I don't know who's on that subcommittee. Library. We ought to talk to the library because. Yeah. Well, assuming the alternates are voted in on Tuesday and Wednesday, then we'll get the uh, get the committee assignments out that are current, and then if there's any gaps, we'll take care of it, and then we'll have uh, those set up, and uh, we'll get the meeting established. I have the town council list, so once we get your list. After the 25th, yeah. Okay. The town council wants to have joint subcommittee meetings? Should. Yeah. It's okay. Sure. It, it's good for the staff and, yeah. you know, no, no, it keeps, yeah, keeps the information, yeah. but not presentations to the boards. They're not going to come sit on. No, it's yeah. no. no, we're not doing that. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's a little hard to hear. So I, when, when you refer to a subcommittee meeting, are you talking about the liaison meeting? Yeah. Yes. Liaison yeah. Meetings. Yeah. 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 So we do those jointly with the town council, very effective and efficient and helpful, I think. I think someone was asking for the regular presentations to the Board of Finance. Those aren't joint meetings. It's going to be just to the Board of Finance. So, um, Got it. Just to the <clears throat> now, I think Mike would like to streamline a few things there, and particularly the Board of Ed. So we'll let we'll work that out and see what we can come up with. He's yeah. got some questions there. I think that's great. Um, and then use our meeting to be the jump start to their meeting versus have them start all over from square one. I think that's what the what the what the Yeah, he's was. asked all of his members to attend to yeah. listen to all your meetings. I think that yeah, I think that makes sense. So they're trying to use ours to jump start and you actually get their questions formulated for their meeting versus starting all over again, which is a good idea. Right. But they are they come as guest members of the audience. They're not going to participate. No. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, I think it's a great idea. If there are no other housekeeping items We'll call it a wrap. I told you, easiest meeting of the year. <laughs> Tom, anything? Calm, anybody? Michael? Yeah. Michael, good to see you. Yeah. You're right. All good. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Maria, second. So, Victor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. So moved. We are adjourned. 48 minutes. <laughs> In the books. Correct. In the books. I, I cannot promise there'll be another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you. <laughs>